Hey guys, in today's video, what we're gonna be looking at is how to change your dog's response to the door. Okay, so this is for all of those dogs that like to run and bark at the door, jump all over the visitors, are just dead excited um, because they've heard the doorbell or the door knocker. Okay, this video is not for your fearful dogs of people. Um, this is for your really excited dogs that just charge at the door, go a little bit loony tune, they might be barking, they might be jumping. Um, this is for them. So this is going to take several steps to change our dog's behaviour when the door goes. Okay, so what we're going to start off with is teaching them what we want them to do. Then we're going to add in some distance work. So we're going to add in, I want you to do that even while I'm doing this. And then what we're going to start to do is then add in the door, the doorbells, the door knockers and us being able to move towards the door. So we're going to start with teaching our dogs a more appropriate behaviour. Okay, for me, I find one of the easier options is to go and sit on a mat or a bed. Um, the stairs or something like that so we almost give them a little bit of a station I want you to go and sit over there while I go and answer the door so what I'm going to do throughout this video is show you how you can use a bed or a mat um, to teach your dogs to go to the bed or the mat while we go and answer the door okay so we're going to start off teaching them what go to the bed or the mat is okay so it starts off with teaching them that this place is the best thing ever and then we're going to put it on cue and then we're going to start to add in some distance away from it okay so you're going to pick your space where do you want your dog to be do you want them on a bed do you want them on a mat and um, do you want them on the step where is it that you want them we're going to use that space okay so i'm going to show you this with marty um, and we're going to build through loving it um, and then adding on some distractions and things like that okay so what you're going to do is you're going to place your bed or your mat um, wherever you want it. I generally say when you first start teaching this, you can teach this anywhere. And then what you can start to do is when they get good at it, you can start putting it towards the door, uh, whether you've got a hallway, whether they're into um, a kitchen or a, or a living room or whichever. Okay, so start it off wherever you want to start it, nice bit of room, um, you're going to find it the easiest. Okay, so what you're going to do is you're going to take some treats. Um, this can be their food, this can be some treats, this can be whichever you want. Um, we're going to chuck one away from the bed. Okay, because then the high chance of your dog turning around and running back towards you to get back onto the bed is quite high okay so we're going to throw one away because then our dogs are going to come back to us to plant themselves on that bed as soon as they do i'm going to start delivering some more so i'm going to start telling them when your feet are on that spot loads of things get delivered to you when they're off that spot nothing generally happens okay so i'm going to throw you out marty be careful if you're on slippy floor guys and um, so as he comes back in as soon as those paws hit the mat, I'm going to start to just dispense food, as if you were like a little bit of a treat dispenser. Don't worry about what they're up to, whether they're in a sit or a down or anything like that. Just dispense them this so that this is the best place ever. Once you've given them a couple, you're going to then send them away again. So once he's eaten those, boy, I'm going to go, ready? Okay. Let him know he can leave, and then as soon as he starts to come back to this, I'm going to start to deliver them again. Again, don't really worry about what they're up to. Marty will throw me a down every now and again because he does already know this. So once he's had a couple, I'm going to say that he can go. Okay. Again, they come back to the beds, we're going to start to deliver them. What your dog should start getting the handle doing is as soon as they come back towards it, they should be almost um, pinpointing this spot. They should be going, where's the food on this spot? Okay? So I don't really care that they're not looking at us. We don't really want that. We want the, we want the um, attention to be with the bed. what you're now going to add in is the down cue okay so what we're going to now start to get the hang of them doing is coming back to their beds and being down on it okay so when i go to answer the door i ideally want my dog to run to the bed and lie down so that's what i'm going to start to practice now okay so i'm going to start to bring him in i'm going to lure him into a down or cue a down so if your dog knows down you're going to cue it and um, if your dog doesn't know down you're just going to lure it with a piece of food and i'll show you both ways um so i'm going to send marty away okay as he comes back in good lad down I'm going to cue him down and then I'm going to start to deliver them in between his feet. Okay, so that's if your dog knows down. If your dog doesn't know down, um, we're going to lure it. And I'll show you that one. Good boy. Okay. Okay. Okay, so I've got the treat. He's coming back in. As soon as he comes 
comes in, I'm going to lure it downwards. Obviously, you guys might have to hold that a little bit longer, but you're just going to hold that treat there until they fall down. As soon as they fall down, you can then release it. And then again, you can start dripping it to them there. Once he's eaten the couple, I'm going to let him know that he can leave. Okay. And then I'm going to bring him back in. generous here guys don't think one or two is gonna is gonna do it okay give them a couple and let them know it's really amazing to be here and um, because we need this behavior to be better than flying at the door okay so we need to make it more reinforcing to be over here than flying at the door okay give them a couple let them know that they can go off okay i'm gonna bring them back in pass them to the dance good boy Okay, so after you've done that about 20 times, what we're now going to do is not say anything. Okay, so we get what Marty's just done for me there. Okay, so I'm going to show you that. Um, but what we basically want to do is you're going to release them off the bed. We're then going to wait for them to come back to the bed because we've built loads of reinforcement for it. We're going to wait for them to lie down and then we're going to give them a couple. If your dog doesn't lie down within four to five seconds, keep practicing asking them. Okay, and then try again. Okay, but most dogs, if they've got the reinforcement in the down, what they'll do is they'll run back to the bed and they'll plonk themselves in that down for you really quickly. Okay, so I'm going to send Marty okay. As he comes back to the bed, I'm going to wait until he decides to do that and then I'm going to um, reward him. Good boy. So what we're starting to build is this come to this spot, lie yourself down, wait there for a little bit while I deliver some treats um, and then I'll let you know when you can come up again. So he's coming back to that spot. He knows that that's where the reinforcement is happening and he knows it's that position that is going to start making me into a dispenser. So I'm just going to wait for him to be lie down. And the bed is super reinforcing, um, lying on the bed is really super reinforcing. What we're then going to start to do is we're going to call it something. So now that we love it, we're going to name it, okay? Um, so now that your dog is running to that bed and lying down, I'm now going to tell him what that is. So you'll notice up until now, I've not been telling him to go to bed, I've not been saying get on your spot or get on your mat or anything like that. I've just been um, allowing my body language to direct him back to this spot and allowing him to know that that's where the food is going to come from. So what I can now start doing is calling it something. Um, so I'm going to say on your bed, um, you can call this on your mat, on your space, on the stairs, call it whatever you fancy. Okay, so once you've released your dog, what you're then going to say is you're going to cue it, um, they'll run in, they'll lie down, we're going to reinforce it. Okay, so what we can start doing is putting a name to it. Okay, so okay. On your bed. Okay, they do the behaviour, you then just start reinforcing them. What you can start to do is add in a couple of seconds in between those treats so you don't you don't dispense them as quickly as you were. So we can start adding in some timing in between those. I'm just gonna wait for them to lie down.
Okay, our first task is those three stages um, whereby we are telling them that the bed is the best thing ever, that spot, being on that spot is amazing, going onto that spot and lying down is amazing, and then we're gonna stick it on cue. Okay, once you've done that, we can then start adding in some distance. Okay guys, so now you've got a dog that can go to their bed, lie down on cue, what we're gonna to start to now do is add in some distance. Okay, so if our end aim is to be able to send our dog to their mats and we then need to go and open the door, we need to be able to move away from our dog enough to be able to get to the door. But then also, we need to build in some distractions so that when our dog is on their bed, they understand that they wait there while we do certain tasks. Okay, so while we open a door, while we talk to somebody, while we bring something in from a door, something like that, okay? So what we're gonna to start to play with here is that getting our dogs to understand that when we've said go to bed, you stay on that bed no matter what I do until I tell you you can then come off, okay? Um, so we release them. Um, so here, depending on how good your dog is at this, it's gonna depend on how quickly you can build those distractions. Some of you are literally just gonna be able to just move around your bed like this, okay? Um, just starting off really, really, really small. Um, some of you are gonna be able to do big steps um, and move away. Some of you are gonna be able to turn away from them or walk away from them. This is solely dependent on, on sort of your dog's personality, how good they are at things like waiting, okay? So, the way what we're gonna start with, so let's say we've got some dogs that have never done this before, never done a wait for, anything like that, okay? Um, I'm gonna send him off, okay? I'm gonna send him back to his bed, on your bed. What I'm then gonna do is I'm just gonna to start to do a little bit of rocking. And in, in between each rock motion, I'm gonna let him know that it was a good choice for waiting where he is. So some of you are just gonna literally start off this basically really quick um, rapid fire treats, letting him know that that is where you want him. Even though I'm moving a little bit, I still want you to wait there. Once you've started doing that and your dog's going, okay, I understand that. What you can start to do is add in bigger steps, okay? So we're gonna take a bigger movement away from them. Um, I'm gonna move around their bed a little bit more before I drop that treat, okay? I'm gonna move a little bit more out of sight this way, um, but I'm just gonna to start to be a little bit more free in my movement as to where I move, how far away I move, and let them know that it's a good choice to wait where they are. Okay, so the first thing you're gonna play with is movement. Can you just freely move around this bed while your dog waits there? Um, for increasing amounts of time, okay? Notice I'm not telling him to stay. I don't want another cue here. I just want him to know that when I told you to go over there, ignore what I'm doing now, and then I'll let you know when you can come off, okay? So try not to add in another cue, because um, otherwise it's another cue that then you've got to fade out. Yeah, well done. After a couple, I'm gonna let him make him come off. Okay. I'm gonna send him back bed and then I might practice that again so I might just do my little movements okay keep doing your movements until your dog's getting really good at it once your dog is getting good at movements you're going to throw in some distractions so what you're going to start doing is going can I move and slightly open my cupboard um and then I'll reward you can I move over here and slightly open a drawer um and then I'm going to come back and reward you can I go over here and open the fridge that's always a biggie um <laughs> I reward you. Can I just move over here and flick some switches? You get really creative when you're doing this. <laughs> Good boy. Um, can I come over here and open the oven? Good boy. Okay, so your dog starts going, ah, oh, waiting here while you do random things around the kitchen generally ends up in the earning Good stuff. Good boy. is play with this a little bit. Can you just move things from there to there and move it back again um, and then reward your dog for staying there? Can you come over here and just stand here for two seconds? Um, because obviously this is a big part of it that you're not doing anything either. Because if I'm standing talking to somebody at the door, um, I'm just going to be stood here for a little bit. So we all clearly want to teach them that sometimes I might just randomly stand and not do anything. Okay? Um, so make that part of it. Good boy. This one's really nice for when you're just generally cooking and stuff because you're just nodding around just doing random things, moving stuff. Lovely for tidying up um, and hoovering. So when you've got hoover out, do a little bit of hoovering, reward them, a little bit of hoovering, reward them. Good boy, I've done. Okay, so you're going to get creative. Okay, you're going to play a little bit 
with just random rewarding, random doing stuff, okay? So I'm only gonna do that for about 30 seconds a minute. I'm not gonna do that for very long. Um, I don't want to bore them. I don't want to tire them out or anything like that. Um, we just wanna teach them that you hold there until I say that then you can come off again. So you're gonna play with just being able to open cupboard doors, move things around, tidy up a little bit, um, and do all those random little things, okay? So you're just gonna play with that a little bit. Um, and then what we're gonna to start to do is add in doors. Okay, so now what we're gonna play with, once your dog can do all of that and they can hold on their bed, um, you're gonna to start to play um, with a little bit of door work. Okay, so our goal is to be able to reach our front door, open the front door, um, talk to somebody and close the front door. Okay, so we're gonna to start to build this. If you've got any internal doors, you're gonna use those first. Okay, so I've got a door here and I've got a door there. Um, I'm gonna show you on that first. Um, and then what we're gonna do and start doing is building it to your front door. Um, your front door will always be a little bit harder because there's more association built onto that front door than there is onto like an internal door, okay? Um, so we're gonna say on your bed, good boy. And I'm gonna start up to see if I can just go and open and close the door, good boy. Can I go over here and close this door? Good boy. Can I go over here and open this door? Good boy. Awesome. Okay. Okay, so we're gonna go, can I open and close the door? Nice and simple. What you're then gonna do is go, can I open and close my main door? Okay, so this is the one that gets hard. Um, it depends on where you live, depending on what's outside the front, may depend on where I situate my dog um, to a certain extent. So, um, for me, I've got a bit of a hallway so I can put Marty out the way slightly. So if I know he's going to come off his bed, I've got a bit of warning to be able to grab him before he releases himself out the door. If you're a bit tight on space um, and you're going to find it a little bit awkward, I'd advise you popping the dog's bed into a different room um, and working on distance, okay, to him, to him back from the door. Because um, that's going to be far easier for you than trying to squidge around the door and then there's a dog there and then you've got your leg in the way. Um, and it all becomes a little bit complicated, okay? So we have to think about safety when we think about where we're putting our dog's beds. Uh, when we're opening and closing doors um, in training. Um, so do make sure you've got a really good solid stay on the internal doors, doors first and then start building to, to your front door, okay? Okay, so I'm gonna show you this on the front door, okay? So how we're gradually gonna build up in and out that front door with a distraction, okay? I am gonna crop my head off because um, I can't quite get the camera to reach, okay? So I'm gonna crop my head off, but I'm gonna show you how we can start to um, put this onto the front door like it was an internal door, okay? We're gonna treat it exactly the same. Um, so what we're going to do first, we're going to set him to bed, good boy, and then I'm going to slowly start to go to the front door, I'm just going to make sure I can tuck the handle, uh, handle. okay, I'm going to come back, I'm going to reward him, okay, so I'm going to make sure first I can go to my front door and I can rattle my handle, if you cannot get to your front door and rattle your handle, what you're going to do is just build up the distance, we're just going to go, can I just come to here and then come back and reward you, okay, can I come to here and just put my hand towards the door, um, and then come back and reward you, okay? Before you build up to the handle. So if the handle is too big of a step, you're gonna go for a little bit of an intermediate step first, walking towards tapping, things like that, okay? So what I'm now gonna start to do, is see if I can open the door, and then I'll come back and reward him, and then I'm gonna start to add in some time, okay? So I'm just gonna go towards the door. I'm gonna open it. Close it, and reward him. Good boy. Okay, so I'm gonna open the door. the door, reward him. So you notice there I hesitate a bit more, I give him a bit more time, but that's postman, I'm gonna need a couple of seconds to talk to him. Okay, so we're just gonna replicate that. Boy. So you'll notice here where I'm standing, I could stop Marty there if I needed to. If I got to here and he decided that that was too much for him, I could pop my I could sort of stop him and um, he's not gonna run out the door. Okay, so do think about where you put your beds when you put your doors work. Um, okay, so what we've got there is we've got a nice bit of, I can open the door, um, he can wait on his bed, um, and I can open the door for a little bit of a prolonged period of time. What we are now going to add in is one of the bigger distractions, which is the word hello. <laughs> okay, as soon as you open that door and say hello, sometimes it can go to absolute pot, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to send them to bed, we're going to open the door, we're going to say hello, we're going to close the door, we're going to reward them for waiting. Okay, we're going to build that up little bit by little bit. So those of you that can say hello without a problem, you're going to have a full-blown conversation with yourself. Okay, you look mad as a hatter, particularly if you've got neighbours opposite you. Um, but it's really 
good, okay? So it really helps your dog learn that even if I say hello, I still want you to wait there, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna release Martin, okay? And send him back to his bed. On your bed. Good boy. Hello. Good boy, well done. Okay, so I'm gonna open the door a bit further this time. So we can say hello, we've gone tick, I can open the door, tick, I can hold the door, tick, I can say hello, okay? So what we now need is the cue that is generally going to set all the dogs off. Okay guys, so we now have a dog that can go to their bed and lie down and wait there while you go and open the door and talk to an invisible person. What we are now going to do is add in the cue that tends to send them do lally, which is the doorbell or the door knocker, okay? So what we're now going to do is we're just going to put that on the front of our routine. So what I'd advise you to do is either um, get in a spare doorbell, a nice little cheap one, and um, you can press them indoors. You can find all sorts of doorbell noises off of YouTube, knocker noises and things like that. Um, or what you can, some of you I know you can do is press your doorbell from indoors. Okay, so whichever. You can record it. The only thing I often say is you're going to record your doorbell or your knocker. Just make sure your dog is not um, visible, only because often what you get is you don't want barking on top of your um, recording. Okay, so make sure your dog's out of view if you're going to record it. Um, otherwise, um, real life noise is going to be the best one. So the real life doorbell, real life knocker is going to be the best one. Um, but sometimes recording it allows us one to do it on repeat, but also doesn't have to rely on somebody standing outside in the cold. Okay, so um, I generally say record it or use use one or find a noise on YouTube that is the same as your doorbell or your knocker. Okay, so I'm going to use a YouTube sound. Um, Marty generally. <laughs> has the ability to respond to any doorbell noise. Um, he will respond to door um, ones on the telly and things like that. Um, he'll often hear a doorbell um, on the TV and think someone's at the door. Um, so he will respond to anything. So I know generally I'll get a very similar response. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press the doorbell. I'm gonna send him to bed and then I'm gonna reward him the first couple of times. Um, the first couple of repetitions, I'm gonna reward him for going to his bed. I'm not gonna go and answer the door. Um, once they start getting the hang of going, ah, okay, doorbell, go to bed. Um, what we're then gonna start doing is then put our door routine on top of it. Um, because what you don't wanna do is make it too hard too soon. Even though we have taught them what we what is expected of them, we're now adding in a new cue um, that is just gonna peek around all of it, okay? Um, so we're gonna send them to bed, reward them for being there. Some of you are gonna have to wait them out a little bit, okay? So when you press that doorbell, some of your dogs are gonna fly at the door, okay? You're just gonna stand very calmly next to their bed and wait for them to acknowledge that you're not going to answer that door. As soon as they sort of look at you as if to say, come on, human. Um, we're just going to go on your bed, okay? Um, wait for them to go to their bed, patience them out, don't, don't yell at them, don't nag them, on your bed, on your bed, on your bed. Okay, make this as calm as possible. We're literally standing here, waiting for them to um, realise we're not answering that door, we're just going to go on your bed. Um, as soon as they get onto their bed, you're going to reward them loads, bring them off, um, have a little play, have a little fuss with them, um, and then we're going to press it again, okay? I generally sometimes say when you're practicing this, try not to press it too many times in a row, um, because sometimes when they get themselves excited, then, then you just building on it okay so sometimes I only do it a couple of times um but once you feel like your dog's getting the hang of going okay I hear the doorbell I run to my bed you're then going to add on the rest of the door routine which is what we've just done okay so I'm going to bring Marty off the bed I'm gonna find my noise the only thing you have to be aware of guys is when you're using noises in YouTube um, and things like that that this doesn't become the cue so obviously I'm doing this now to try and film this for you um but what you almost want to be doing is say for instance you want to practice this at home pretend to be do doing some like washing up or something um, and then randomly press it because obviously if your dog sees you standing here with your phone pressing the noise and then the doorbell happens they're going to get the hang of what is real life and what isn't real life okay so try and make it a little bit discreet when you do it okay so it's not so obvious Don't worry about this too much. If your dog does this, 
um, and you want to press it again, just release them off to go and do something else. Okay. Um, so this is just where reinforcement is currently on the bed. Um, okay. Good boy, well done. So we've gone, do you know what, they get the hang of it, doorbell goes, I'm going to run to my bed. Um, but what we're now going to do is add on the rest of that door work. Some of you, um, when you press the doorbell the next time, send your dog to bed. Um, some of you can give them a treat and then go to your door, or some of you can just acknowledge that they've gone to their bed and then go to their door. Um, that will completely depend on your dog and the personality and what they potentially cope with more. Um, I personally try and do no treats to begin with. Um, I want to do the whole routine only because if I'm going for the door, I don't have to try and scrabble for a pot of treats. Okay, so some of you are say have a pot of treats by the door to make it easy for yourself. Um, but generally, what I want them to do is go. The doorbell's gone. I've got to go and wait over here until they're finished. Okay, so if you can get away with doing it like that, do it like that because that way it's going to be a bit nicer and easier for you. And um, you don't have to try and reward them for being on the bed and then go and answer the door. Um, but if your dog's struggling in the early stages of training, this you can reward them first if you need to. Okay, so what we're going to do now is I'm going to build on that door routine. Okay, okay. Send him off. I'm going to press my doorbell. Come to bed. Good boy. I'm going to acknowledge he's gone to his bed and I'm going to go and ask the door. Good boy. If they stay on their bed, you're going to come back and reward them. Good boy. Again, I'm going to heavily reward them the first couple of times because I want them to know that that was a better decision than running out there. Good boy. Let him know that he can come off. Okay. Good boy. I'm going to do that again. Are oh, you bed? Good boy. This time I'm going to say hello. onto the top of it okay so we press the doorbell we send our dogs to bed we go and do our routine and then we come back and reward them okay and you want loads and loads and loads of repetition of that so your dog starts going okay doorbell goes i'll go to my bed doorbell goes i'll go to my bed um and then you are ready to um enlist a helper okay so now you've done that you can either dive straight in and just start with visitors that come um, I would suggest the first couple that you do is with people that you know, okay, so you can mock it up. Um, either have somebody around for a cup of tea um, or mock it up with somebody that lives in the house, okay? So this is where we are going to need somebody on the other side of the door. Um, you can be very natural then in what you're up to. Um, my favourite time is coming home from work. So if you live with somebody, um, I'll often say don't use your keys, okay? Knock on the door. Um, they'll catch you off guard, which is a big part of this, um, is catching you off guard. Um, and then being able to follow through with our routine, not worrying that we've got to go and get that door, okay? Because we know who's on the other side of it. We don't have to go, oh God, I've got to get the door. Um, I can't worry about the dog. We can allow ourselves to worry about the dog and then go and get the door, okay? So I'll always say enlist the help first, or if you live on your own, um, grab somebody that you know that can come that can come around for a cup of tea, but just let them know you're gonna be a little bit of while to go and answer the door. You're not gonna be there straight away. You're just sending the dog to the bed, okay? Um, so enlist some help. So I've got my husband at the door. <laughs> Um, what I'm going to do is show you two options, okay? One of them is if you're bringing a parcel in, that's not going to look any different to what we've just done, other than the fact that you're probably going to hear another voice, um, and he's going to hear another voice. 
Um, and then what you've got is the option of them coming in. Okay, obviously we're not looking at jumping up at people in this video and that is a whole new thing, a different thing. Um, what we're just looking at is being able to bring somebody in without your dog darting at the door. Okay, so there what we do um, is we bring them in, we're gonna reward our dogs for staying on the bed um, while that person's coming in and then we're gonna let them know that they can then go and say hello. Okay, so we're gonna give that a go. So once you've done a couple of those guys, you are good to go, okay? Start um, being really consistent in practicing that on a daily basis, weekly basis, monthly basis, depending on how many people you have knock at your door. Um, every single time your door goes, send your dog to bed, um, do your routine, reward your dog afterwards, okay? And what you should start seeing is a habit be created, okay? So once you've got a habit, um, what your dog should do is hear the doorbell and run to the bed, okay? They know what is expected of them. You have created and taught a whole new behaviour um, with the cue of the doorbell, okay? So once you've got to that point, it is lovely, um, but do remain consistent, do do it every time, because we often do find that is our difference between a training scenario um, and a real life one is that we're just not consistent enough in the real life ones, okay? So do remain consistent, and then what you'll be able to do is change your dog's behaviour around um, and give them a whole new thing to do when that doorbell goes, um, which is much more appropriate.